Hello everyone, Jake here. I'm going to show you my custom mapping for the VCI 400. I created my own because I felt that the ones out there didn't really reflect how I uh, use Tractor and how I DJ. And uh, part of the mapping sort of inspiration was to get all the functionality that I usually look for on the computer screen and have it available and visible on the controller itself to keep my eyes on the decks and not on the screen. And also to maximize the functionality that I use the most, not necessarily the functionality that's available in Tractor. So you'll see that along the way that some things that are typically in modern controllers, maybe uh, advanced remix deck functionality, isn't something that I particularly use that often, so it's not a major feature of this mapping. Before getting started, you should have the following set up in Tractor. You need all four effects units. Effects 1, 2, and 3 need to be set to group mode, and effects 4 needs to be set to single mode, and that single effect needs to be set to delay. Um, additionally, when you first load in the mapping, you should press this button. It'll set the values that you need for the FX freeze in the uh, fourth FX unit. You should also make sure that um, just hit A and B, on each of the decks, it'll just set the modifiers correctly, and then you're just about ready to go. So starting from the global section, all the EQs and the filters are the same, uh, as is the master. What's different is this button here is now a shift, along with the other two shifts, and the LED will illuminate if you press it, but it is set to hold mode, so shift is only engaged when the button is held down. Despite what the LED says, there's no way to program this LED, unfortunately. It's uh, set by the firmware. Um, moving on, you have snap and quantize. Below that, record for the loop deck and play for the loop deck. If you hold shift, these top two buttons become what they normally would be in uh, the tractor loop deck, which is uh, size and delete or undo. And of course, dry wet hasn't changed either. Um, moving on to this encoder here, it still acts the same as it normally does. And you press it, you get a browser, and um, if you hold shift and turn, you'll go by page. But I changed uh, the functionality. If you press shift and the encoder, you'll go into tree mode, so you can browse your folders. And then if you press, uh, and it'll also open folders as you scroll over it. Uh, and if you press uh, shift and the encoder again, you'll go back to list mode. Here, load and sync are the same, but if you press shift, um, the sync button will tell you which deck is set to master. So, for example, um, now this deck is set to master, but if I did this, it'll set this one to master. Moving on to FX sends. FX sends are what they were earlier, where it's FX 1 and 2 for each of the decks, only if you press shift. So, over here, deck 1. Uh, deck A has effects unit 1 engaged, and deck B has effects unit 2 engaged, uh, and you can control that obviously. But if it's not, if shift is not engaged, on the left side you have key lock, but it's uh, inverted, which means that if, if if this light, if number 1 on each of these decks is illuminated, that means that key lock is disengaged. I did that because 99% of the time I need key lock engaged. So I only need to know when it's disengaged. So for me, that's a particular way I DJ. I just want to know when it's disengaged. So that's uh, when the one on each of these decks is lit up. Two is a FX freeze, echo freeze that you might have heard. Uh, it's a very popular effect. I'll give you a sample. And it just echo freezes out the music, which is nice. Now know that you can only have it engaged on one deck at a time. So you can't FX freeze uh, two decks at the same time. Moving towards the line faders and cross faders, they're all the same as a standard mapping, uh, as is the pre-fader listening, the Q, there's no shift functionality there. To the rubber buttons, now I'm on the leftmost mode, which is the mode I'll probably be using 99% of the time. Uh, Q and play are the same for A and C, and likewise on B and D. What's different is you have Q up mode, this is for deck C, and this is for deck, uh, sorry, this was for deck A, and this is for deck C. 
And um, additionally, if you hold shift and you press the Q up button for C or D, it'll set you all the way back to the beginning of the song. So if you look at deck A, right now I'm in the middle of the song. If I hold shift and this button here, the Q up, it'll bring me back to start. It's the equivalent of hitting this button right here, which is extremely useful. Again, something that I find myself using the mouse to click, but if I, I've added the functionality within the mapping. So going to the first page here in the pads, these act as a page buttons, by the way. Um, the first page is cues. And if uh, a button is lit, it means that there is a queue stored. And if it's not lit, that means it's free. Uh, pretty simple. You can delete it by pressing shift. And then the queue point you want to delete. And then you can add it just by pressing it. Uh, another way to get to the delete, if you don't want to press this shift or that shift or that shift, is if you're already in this mode, this page, you can hold down this button and press um, a queue point to delete it. I'll skip page two for a second go to page three. Page three are effects. Um, you have beat mashers on the first top four, um, an LFO here and here in different values, and a gator here and here in different values. And these are all in effects unit three, and you don't need to set anything in effects unit three. It'll automatically set the right effects at the right values. And um, actually, when you press this page, it'll automatically set the dry wet to 100%. Uh, moving on to the next page, this page will probably eventually become a sampler pad, but right now it's more of um, uh, fixing up the beat grid kind of tools. So this is a, a tap button. So uh, when I play a song, it'll go by, uh, this will be the beat marker, and you can have a visual representation of the, uh, how the beat is going. And if your track is ever off, you can tap the BPM in. Sometimes I know that tractor gets the wrong uh, beat sometimes it hits the um, like the hi-hat is the beat and if you need to fix it just hit the tap button to tap in the beat it's another thing I find from time to time I end up going into the software with my mouse to fix but now I have it in the mapping which is great also the um, divide by two multiply by two for the tempo which is great for dealing with tracks that are neither one nor the other like dubstep you're usually at 70 or 140 depending on what you think about the track um, whatever so divide by two multiply by two okay moving on to page two um, which is the loop section uh, if you have a loop engaged at any time this LED will be eliminated now if you want to disengage a loop this is the loop active button. So no matter what happens, if you press this button, the loop will be disengaged. If you want to activate a loop, there are a number of different ways to do it. Obviously, you can reactivate the loop here by pressing the, the same encoder. You can, on the loop page, press any of these buttons, and it will activate that loop length. So I said that this one was 8. And uh, if you press it, it will activate it. If you press it again, it will deactivate it. You can press it change the size and it will still be activated so if you want to go you know down and make a micro loop you can do that and it'll still be activated and then uh, press it again and it'll release it now moving up here this changes your loop length like I said earlier but if you press it it'll automatically set down an 8 beat loop I do that because most of the time uh, if I don't want to go to this loop page I'm just gonna set an 8 beat loop and go, let's say, up one notch to 16, so that I don't even have to look at this page to see what the loop length is at. So for me, it's about ease of use, and uh, most of the time I set down an 8-beat loop anyway. So to get to that as quick as possible, I set this button to an 8-beat loop. And um, again, if it's active, you'll see it flashing. And this button here, I felt that I didn't really have a use for it, so I just made it a four beat loop and the reason for that is when I like to move through songs this is the move wheel I typically like to go in four beat increments so I figured that's a good use for this button um, and this wheel like I said is the move wheel it's set to loop automatically I mean the loop length so if you are at 32 beats if you turn it it'll jump forward 32 beats or back if you're in a loop it will automatically jump the loop length, it'll move the loop. 
uh, which is nice. You don't have to change, go into the menu and change the beats moving to, instead of beat jump to loop, it'll automatically, if a loop is engaged, change the move uh, encoder to moving loops. And then if you let go of the loop, it'll go back to just moving like normally. The effects section is similar to the default mapping. You have effects one, two, and three, and this activates and deactivates it. And the parameters for one, two, and three. And here you have the dry, wet knob. And this button here is not for effects, it's for flux mode. So it engages it for deck A and C at the same time on this side, and B and D, oops, over here on this side. To change effects, to cycle through effects, you hold shift and press this knob for effect one, this for two, and this for three. And also there are effects presets. You can set them however you like in the mapping. They change effects number two and three. So if you hold shift and press this, it loads this bank, which is a filter 92 and a transpose. This button will load a delay and a reverb, and this button will load a format filter and a peak filter. Up here, these two buttons, the last thing in the mapping, uh, control the tempo range. If it's on the bottom one, it'll be 2% for both decks A and C, and if it's up top, it'll be 8% for decks A and C. And this is the same thing for B and D. So as you can see, the tempo range, it's gone to negative 8% here, but if I flip it to this bottom one, the 2%, it'll go only up to negative 2%. And note that when you switch from this mode 2% to this mode 8%, um, it'll jump. Oh, actually, no, I set it to soft takeover, so never mind. Um, you have to go and find where the tempo fader is in the software before it'll take over the position. I did that so it, the tempo doesn't jump. So if you accidentally shifted and didn't realize that a deck was playing, it won't just jump. Uh, just some final quick things. Um, if you press shift and press uh, this button here, it'll um, expand out the area that's under the advanced section of, of the deck of A, if you're in deck B here, um, of deck A and C, A and B. And if you're in D, it'll do it for C and D. And then once that is open, if you press this button, it'll open up the grid section. If you press shift in this button, it'll do the Q section, shift in this section, uh, and this button, it'll open the move section. Um, hopefully, if you're using this mapping, you won't have to have this section open because I designed the mapping so that um, it can be closed and you can access all those functions and see where all those um, statuses are through the mapping itself. So I like to keep it closed. And then it's the same thing on this side except that this button, if you press shift and press it, it'll change the layout. So the layout that's up here, it'll cycle through them. So you can set them however you want and it'll cycle through it. Final quick things, uh, there's another thing I forgot to say is that if you press shift and move the jog wheel, uh, let me disengage this loop, uh, it'll quickly seek through the whole track. That's uh, part of the default mapping that I didn't realize when I first started messing around with this, but it's actually really handy for easily seeking through a track. Another thing to know is that there are two bugs that I know of in this mapping. One is you can see here, it is on the loop page, but for some reason the LED isn't illuminated. I've spent a lot of trying, time trying to get this to work all every single time. But for some reason, sometimes it just doesn't. But know that if there are no LEDs illuminated, you're probably on this page. Another thing to know is that for some reason, when a track is not playing and vinyl mode is disengaged, sometimes, as you can see here, the needle moves incredibly slow, but then sometimes it moves fast, and I can't figure out why. Hopefully I will soon, but not a big deal. Thanks for watching. This is, again is my mapping for the VCI 400. I know it's not for everybody and um, not everyone might like it, but that's okay because uh, I made it for my habits of DJing what I need to get out of Tractor and a DJ controller. That being said, I hope that someone out there finds this useful either as a mini map for their VCI 400, either as inspiration for a different controller or as a starting off point for mapping the VCI 400 because I feel that if you're buying this controller 
It's because you want to get your functionality out of it, you know, the way you DJ and customize the controller accordingly. So thanks for watching. Please comment. Uh, let me know if you find any bugs or anything like that, and I'm going to try and fix the, the ones that I mentioned earlier and hopefully get out newer versions of this mapping uh, in the future. All right, thanks.